Hello my friends, welcome to Insight Electronic Channel and today we're gonna look at this Fluke 87.5 newly acquired multimeter. So as you see it's a little bit, you know, a little bit crusty here, here it's low, a little, a little scratch here and things like that. So I've decided to buy this one from, I guess, the guy mentioned he's a retired HVAC technician. So this seems to be was used in a HVAC environment. So uh, honestly, I can tell you right away that it has a little bit of a problem, but that's the issue when you buy something used from people you don't know. So let's take a look what kind of issue this um, this fluke has, and let's see if we can fix it. Also, I do have uh, another one like that, but this one is fluke 87, like very first generation. This one is 87.5. This is much newer multimeter. Why I need two of them? Having two multimeter is very useful. Sometimes you want to monitor voltage and current. Sometimes you want to measure a few different things. For example, um, voltage and frequency or IC voltage and frequency. Uh, I'm not sure if this guy actually shows. It has, does this have a dual display? No, it doesn't. So yeah, something like that. So this is, this. that's why keeping two multimeters is very important. Uh, so that this guy is operational obviously I using it all the time so this guy has a little bit of issue but let's go first I clear um, AC works because we can do something like that and yeah AC clearly works and I tested it with uh, different frequencies uh, using my um, analog discovery kit and yes it actually shows um, AC correctly. DC works. Let's take this actually cropped out battery and uh, it says whatever pretty much this battery is dead key. Let's take this battery it's 1.2 volt and it's actually dead too. Um, I have, uh, for example, let's power up my 24 volt DC multimeter, sorry, power supply right here, and it's gonna show 2409 and power supply shows 24.1. So, um, yeah, that's good. Millivolt, uh, we can, I don't know, this is gonna work for millivolts, it's gonna be a few thousands of millivolts. Overload. Yes, I think I need a little bit less millivolts than that. <laughs> uh, I assume millivolts would be fine. I don't have really, you know what? Let's use my power supply here. All right, so we have 10 millivolts right here. So let's see what's gonna say. Yes, sorry, I'm wrong. 0 0.1 millivolt, and we have um, 100 sorry 0.1 volt and we have 103 millivolt here and there so let's just uh yeah that seems to be working all right continuity is that continuity oh wrong button continuity pretty good continuity resistance is uh, so for resistance I have this. This is my resistance tester. This is Vishay point. Uh, it's about one thousand of a percent um, resistors. So they are very good quality. So this is twenty kilo ohm resistor, and there is hundred ohm resistor right here. Hello, hundred ohm, and uh, well here and there, but hundred or oh, maybe a little bit off, judging by by the significant the the last digit it should be actually close to zero but here we are so that's good enough capacitance so what's better about this guy than about this guy this guy has a 30 microfarad limit for capacitance this guy doesn't have such limit so hence we have here our favorite nichicon capacitor 1000 microfarad and it's it's gonna show me Oh, 
100 microfarad yeah here we are 1000 microfarad okay so that's clearly working and this is almost brand new capacitor so resistance and and then works next we have diode mode and for diode i just have this little box of like a uh, digital supplies which comes with my analog discovery we can use led to test oh, do not going oh here's just a diode regular diode and and opposite direction it's gonna work let's just grab white led mm -hmm. not enough voltage to actually make it shine let me take red one red one i think gonna gonna show some light A little bit of light as you see yep okay so that works so amp and milliamp though that's where I have a problem uh, how would I would sh how would I show this to you all right my friends so in order to test next range I have to use this uh, 50 watt 8 ohm resistor so I'm gonna set my uh, uh, 10 watt power supply here to 8 volt and current limiting whatever a little bit more than 1 amp just make sure it's not gonna blow up anything so when I hook up this resistor right here it's gonna show us almost 1 amp 975 milliamp okay so this is what we expect 8 volt 8 ohms we're gonna have about 1 amp all right so now let's just keep it here and now switch our multimeter in M. But like which is very very weird for this particular multimeter in comparison to this guy. So when you switch it to M, this guy by default goes into DC. This guy for default goes to AC. So you have to switch this and now it shows a, a direct current. Current for direct current. <laughs> so now we would be able to measure it and it's supposed to show us about 1 amp why i'm doing this mistake all the time have to switch leads as well so now we are in amp mode and we are showing uh, using a dc range and what we have we have one null negative which is sure we have 109 instead of 900 so now power supply is showing 920 probably there is extra current thing somewhere in the in the here probably a lot of wires or something so anyways 960 okay we're showing this so this clearly there is a problem here otherwise it would show the same value just to make sure that we i'm not lying just take this guy go to amp range do this Here we are, 960 milliamp. I'm gonna keep it around. Okay, so this is what we have. We clearly have a problem with DC amp. So let's check DC milliamp. So for DC milliamp, okay, before okay, I do this, before I switch all that. So now for milliamp, we're gonna reduce voltage 10 times. So we're gonna switch it to 800 millivolt so now we have 100 millivolt i do current limit to 400 because this milliamp range is 400 milliamp i have to oh it kept the dc so okay let's try so now we have milliamp range 800 millivolt so it's supposed to be 100 milliamp it shows uh, on power supply 90 milliamp shows some garbage here Yepsis, we have a garbage. And just for giggles, let's switch into this guy. Milliamp range, DC. Yeah, 84, fine. Milliamp, so this guy is working. And the last one is a microamp range. So keep it here. Reduce the voltage to. 
reduce the voltage to 10 millivolt and let's see what we have here switch it to micro AC DC and let's see 0.7 microamps which is obviously wrong it's too low and microamps here DC hundred ten microamps we can calculate it right so yeah clearly the amp range here is a bust so let's just uh, take a look what the heck is going on here because clearly we have to fix it and uh, yeah so everything else seems to be working except the uh, amp range so amp amp milliamp and microamp is not working so let's just take it apart and see what is blown there i hope it's not microcontroller but it seems like everything else is working except those two things so it's probably you know i hope it's some kind of passive ones actually get to, this guy got warm so let's just um, hope. So this also gives us a chance to take a look inside this look multimeter and see how it's made or what's inside. So have to remove this uh, protection, Ooh, it, which is not easy. It's very massive. And start digging. Yeah, doesn't really, I don't know, I'm not sure, was it calibrated or something? What's going on here? Let me remove this battery. Oh, oh, damn! Looks like this thing had a tumble a little bit more than I thought, look at this. So clearly the, and, and here's the, here's the broken case right here. Easy, easy. All right, so we are in. What kind of what kind of fuse is this? So cl clearly fuses are fine because they are actually showing something, but this fuse is kind of weird. That's not how it's supposed to be looking. I must say. That's a like is it is it hitch rank or what? What the fuck? I'm sorry. Take a look at this shit. You see that guys? Someone got very creative. This is hilarious. Yeah. At least we know that milliamp range is not completely burned, but this, this, uh, this is this is stupid. This is super stupid. So what's gonna happen? Yeah, you're gonna you know save you, yourself a time and yada yada, but you're gonna blow your multimeter front end, or at least you're gonna blow something that your your amp range is not gonna work again. You won't be able to measure currents. This is I think this is super retarded. Let me see what kind of freaking fuse is this well fuse was actually correct but obviously if it's if this is done to it it's obviously not, not was not working so yeah so now like uh, as you see you have to take a look inside because there is an um, indication that um, uh, that this multimeter is not working the amp range is not working so now I have to take a look what is going on so okay so um, 
Let's dig a little bit further to see. Okay, there are a bunch of screws here. Okay, let's just uh, unscrew them. Hmm, it's too big of a screwdriver. Amazing. I'm gonna put it right here. No, I can lift it all. Okay, here we are. So it's just uh, just backing. I don't even know where is the. Uh, here is the. Uh, I guess light LED. Back light LED. Gonna put it right here. So I see nothing really busted here. Okay, guys, um, I have prepared these printouts. The one, this one, is actually listed all protection circuits involved. This is the part of schematic uh, input of the input part of the multimeter, and this is actually PCB layout. Just because ele uh, elements here are not marked, so only only few of them. So let's uh, read this um, table, which actually lists and component being protected and component which are protecting that component. So we are interested in this particular area. So in order to protect S1 um, switch, I guess, um, this switch, there is a F1, which is fuse 1, CR2 and CR, CR1 and CR2. Let's take a look um, at schematic here. So this is our fuse, this is our CR2, which is diode bridge, and CR1 is a just diode. So this is used to protect essentially from the short circuit when you apply voltage essentially across this and that, which is going to be short circuit, like it goes like this. All right. So fuse blown, and if, I don't know, if voltage was too high or, or uh, current was, you know, too high fuse is blown and this is gonna be blown as well somehow so and curious about this resistor as well and this is the uh, switch s1 been in microamp or milliamp mode yeah so this can't be blown so we have to check first this so I'm gonna do I'm gonna go one by one and check all those components so there is um, u2 pin 3 after f1 opens after F1 opens, U2 pin 3. So R7, CR5, you have to check those guys as well. So let's first check this one. Fuse obviously is gone. CR1 and CR2. And let's consult the schematic here. So as you see, this diode bridge and this diode, they are connected across this uh, resistor. So if this is gonna go open, uh, over here we will measure the resistance. If this is gonna go short, over here we're gonna measure like uh, zero. So let's see what we get. And uh, the, the only problem I won't be able to figure out easily who's shorted here, this or that. So yeah, this is something interesting. Let me see. Let's switch to ohms first. Okay, so uh, let's go across the bridge on AC side. Okay, it's shorted. Let's go across. Shorted as well. In diet mode, I assume it's gonna be zero. Yeah, so we have short right here. So essentially one of those elements here is gone. So in order to figure out is it the bridge or a diode, I have to probably unsolder the bridge first and check the diode. So in order to unsolder that, yeah, I would have to pr pr probably use the, my use my heat gun. Yeah. 
have to like glue stuff over here to make sure it's not gonna like melt and things like for example not to melt this guy what else we have to check where is that CR5 located so in order to locate CR5 CR10 yeah it's not easy this is all kind of scattered all over the shop CR6 CR5 so over here we have this CR5 so let's see what this guy reads it's in diet mode yeah I'm not sure the pin out exact pin out of this thingy okay one diet is okay another diet seems to be okay mm, not what I expected Well, at least there is no short. <laughs> so potentially, this diet over here, where is it? This actually pair of diet, CR5, is okay. Yeah, I need to, yeah, one, two, three. I need to know the pin out of this guy. No, it says nothing right here. What about CR6? Probably gonna read about the same. Mm-hmm. Um, judging by their reaction, they're actually reading the same, so potentially they are okay. Highly likely they are okay. So I'm not gonna be touching those at the moment. There is a whole bunch of more of these sort of deities on the ohms range. Well, for example, CR10 and uh, we're actually in between. Let me find the CR10. I think CR10 is right. Just for giggles to check if, how they all measure. So it's somewhere, so it's somewhere. CR8, CR10. So this, this guy, is CR10. Let me switch. So this is supposed to read the voltage drop. Yes, here we are. So these guys are a little bit more involved. So that's why they're reading, but essentially I think they are okay. So we have to deal with that diode bridge and the diode first and also check the resistor right here to, to make sure the resistor is not gone. Also, I see a little bit of a discoloration of the PCB tracks right here. Let me show you. You see that? A little bit of a discoloration right here and right there. I don't know, I think it's a big deal, but looks like it's something abnormal right ha happened in this area. So hence there is some kind of, you know, some discoloration. So we have to remove this guy and remove probably first this guy and check if they need this guy need to be removed. So this is probably easier to remove than this bridge. So you have to think how can I solder it? I can use the soldering wick or I can use a heat gun. Maybe unsoldering wick would be actually easier. I'll try that first. Alright, so now we have our little diet pulled out. Now let's just um, give it a try and see, measure what's going on with this little bridge rectifier. So, let's say first we're gonna try like this. We have nothing. We have diet drop. Okay, let's rotate it. Okay, so this seems to be fine. Okay, let's try again. So those diets are seems to be fine. Okay, so now let's check what's gonna get here. Nothing. Now we have to have double diet, two diets. Okay. 
Wait a second. Haha, uh -huh, I think we have a problem. Looks like one of our diet is gonski inside the diet block. Some of them are fine. Okay, let's see what we have. Here, this is the short. Yeah, of course, it's gonna be short as well. So yeah, so we have a short in this diet. So one, one single diet of four is actually gone. Um, yeah. So nevertheless, so this definitely deemed gone. Like a busted. Let's also try this diet. If it's okay. Yeah, and it's busted as well. Because right now, one end of this diet is open. Oops, you don't see that. Let me try again. Okay, so... So let's try um, this diet, whatever left is here. So, um... Uh, looks like our diet is Gonski. We have to unsolder it as well. Yep, this diet is shorted because right now the one end of this diet is actually open so like it's not even connected to anything or have actually both ends. So this diet is gone as well. So one diet here and one diet here. So we have to desolder this gentleman as well. So let's do this as well and have to order those parts. Okay. I'm gonna use a little bit of cheap quick as well. It's so much easier to have this oops have this uh, fast cheap SMD removal alloy, whatever it is. Some cheap cheap quick knockoff, but it works. And I'm gonna use that as well. So much easier than just using the uh, heat gun here. The main uh, thing here is not to spread this crop around, otherwise it's going to be pain to clean up. Okay, just remove it. Nice and easy. And obviously, after this, you have to clean up. For sure. You don't want to leave this stuff behind. I don't like the sputtering around, but try to remove as much as possible just in soldering iron. Yeah, this is a bit of a pain in the ass to clean, but seems to be we did clean it up nicely. Okay, now we have to test the other diode. Just to make sure it's correct, let's shut it down. 
Okay, diet mode. Yep. This diode is gone as well. So this little diode reads SD81A. Um, that, yeah, I have to search for this diode. But funny, uh, funny enough, the uh, actually service manual mentioned something else, like a different part. It's actually service manual mentioned something else for this guy as well. Curious. But they clearly were not repaired. So we need to order these parts and replace them. So this is the second day and I couldn't believe how fast I got all these goodies from um, DJ Key uh, to actually repair my multimeter. So I decided to order a 5 pack of um, for 40 milliamp multi um, F uh, multimeter fuses and also only two of a uh, 10 amp fuses so um, set because I have to replace those two for both multimeter my uh, other multimeter has the wrong one and replace one of these into other multimeter as well so these are legit uh, fuses right so yeah it's amazing so that's gonna be replaced in the last uh, order so also we got here uh, I think this is this is the bridge rectifier so yeah bridge rectifier 600 volt one and a half amp from who's this on semi on semi this is on semi and this is Infineon this is diode array. Oh, this is this is little tiny diodes. I'm not gonna touch those just in case I got them because they may also fry. And this one is on semi as well. This is general purpose purpose diode. So let's just open them and and replace them. I really, really like those uh, plastic key bags. Oh, it's a bag in the bag. Oh my god, it's a serious business. Another one here. Yeah, the sh shipping was like super fast I ordered it last night and here we are I got the freaking diodes and uh, and fuses it was super, super quick so yeah this tiny diode is gonna be replacement for this diode and this bridge gonna be replacement for here so this is uh, pretty cool and this is exactly the bridge um, uh, I need. The diode is not the same. This diode is uh, GF1 or something to this extent. This is different diode, but I mean, they are the same spec. So yeah, should be fine. This is a general purpose diode, nothing really, really special here. I, I got like a whole bunch of them just in case in five of these bridges. Maybe I'll use them for something else. So let's take our um, multimeter and replace those two parts. First one I'm gonna replace the diet because it's a little bit fin um, finicky place and then I will uh, replace the bridge rectifier. All right, guys, I've did my a uh, reflow job here, which was probably the actually first time I used this soldering paste or ever used the soldering paste. So probably this is my first job, not the best job, but hey, um, yeah, <laughs> don't judge, please. So um, I have reflown this uh, diode and uh, sorry, the, the bridge and the diode. So let's check first of all what we have on this little diode here. So we are in a diode mode and let's see nothing this way and all right that's what we expect now let's see what we have on the ac side of the oops that's not nice on ac side of the bridge i'm gonna just do this 
you have voltage drop of 774 but this is because if you switch to resistance oops let me show you it's gonna show one kilo ohm this is because of these resistors right here one kilo ohm resistor so essentially um, across the bridge so looks like we have successful repair good okay so these guys go so go away so now we have to assemble it we have to put all fuses back where it's supposed to be okay and now we have to assemble everything in um, in reverse. Alright, so here is moment of truth. I put everything together and let's see if it works. Uh, okay, well, I guess now I have to test many of the functions again to make sure they are operational. So let me quickly do and run quick tests of everything I have here. So first of all, let's switch to ohms mode. 20 kilo ohm. 101 ohm. This is something I have to work, I guess, around because um, this is like old battery. Yeah, it's showing about the same what it used to. So now is the probably most important test. Let's switch to our amp range and see what it's gonna show. Okay. Mm. Let me rig everything up again with the beefy power resistor.
Okay, so we have our 8 ohm resistor. This is 50 watt 8 ohm resistor. We have our power supply set to 8 volt. And when I do this, bench power supply is supposed to current limit about 1 amp. So when I do this, we're supposed to have this guy show around 1 amp. Okay, let's correct. Let's check if we are correct. We are in amp mode. We switch here to amp. And let's see. And here we are. We are showing 946 and power supply is showing 946 as well because we probably have a bunch of losses in those lots of wires I have here. That works. Now let's switch to 800 millivolt. Sorry, that, yeah, yeah, exactly. 800 millivolt. 800. So 0.8 millivolt and current limit gonna be I'll do 200 milliamp. So if we in this amp mode, okay, it's still amp mode, gonna do this. What do we have? Yeah, we have quite a bit. It's all over the shop actually. Okay. Well, we have 70. It's dropping. I don't know why it's dropping. Okay, 70 something milliamps. Well, it has to be 100, but again, losses. What the hell? Why it's all over the shop? Okay, here we are. It's a good contact. So 82 milliamp. So if you switch to this range, let's see what it shows. Yeah, it's not the best precision, but it's so 72.3. But the power supply shows actually 66 milliamp. Interesting. So now let's switch to even less. So microamp range here. Yeah, well, not 10 volt for sure. So for, um, I don't even know what I'm gonna test for microamp. So right now, um, 10 millivolt, I'll try to set on my power supply, 10 millivolt. I should have done it with the Hewlett Packard, a, a bench a system power supply, which is way more precise than this guy, but still. Okay, let's set the current limit like, I don't know, 20 milliamps. Okay, and let's see first what we're gonna get. Let's see what we're gonna get first at the at this uh, milliamp range. Yeah, well, this is like 0.6 milliamp. So if you switch to microamp, it's gonna be like 600 microamps, right? Uh, it's not what I expect. Oh, it's AC. Uh, duh. It's not 600. Ninety four microamp. Again, DC. Huh. Milliamp. Six hundred ninety milliamp. Sorry. Yeah, this is something. Let me take this multimeter and see what it's gonna show at microamp range. At first, at milliamp range. Pretty much the same. Read a little bit higher. 83 milliamps. So 830 or 20 microamps. Hundred microamp. Hmm. Okay. It seems to be consistent, but this guy reads lower for some reason.
DC. Da. Well, well, at least those two are consistent. So, by replacing those two components, we actually fixed our multimeter, I think. I do believe, right? What do you guys think? And also, obviously, by replacing this guy. So, uh, I think this was actually quite successful. Uh, repair. Oops. No, this one. This one goes here. I think this uh, this was a successful repair. I still have to check some other ranges to make sure, like, um, AC voltages works, the, the capacitor diode modes are working. Millivolt. I don't know. I can actually check millivolt. Let me check millivolt. So right now it's 10 millivolt. Let's see what's gonna say. Let's see what's it gonna measure here. I'm alright. I'm double checking myself now. Alright, so that seems to be alright. It's 11 millivolt. So yeah, this says uh, it's working. Sorry. Now it is working yeah this range is working and this range is working perfect so if you are here let me check the capacitor thingy and i still need to find some kind of diode okay 1000 microfarad that's correct and the closest diode i have to me is this diode bridge right here so i just pull it out of the packaging and let's see what it says Okay, and in reverse, and nothing. And those two are supposed to show two dead drops, and in reverse, nothing. Good. So, yeah, I think we have properly fixed our lovely Fluke 87. Obviously, after poking around, probably it's not the most calibrated multimeter anymore, but at least it measures a milliamp and amp and now I, it has at least proper fuses both fuses are the right ones so now i have to put the proper fuses in this guy but that's not gonna be a video for that so because i got this fuse and here is 3 amp here is actually 3 amp fuse for instead of 440 milliamp and also I have to replace where is the big ass the other one i couldn't find it not this anyways and also it has 15 amp fuse basement fuse actually instead of 11 probably not the worst case scenario but still i bought proper fuses i'm gonna put them on i actually have like handful of those basement fuses um uh, i could find in um in, on uh, at the ebay uh, one of the ebay sellers it's still worth keeping around 15 amp is still probably gonna fly i even saw some uh, multimeters actually have 15 amp fuses in them so yeah, i can keep this around but for this particular video, we fixed this 87.5, guys. So thank you for being with me. Thank you for um, <laughs> keeping being patient for, uh, for this long video. I hope this was useful. In any, if and now if anyone has blown amp and milliamp range on the fluke multimeter, they can test those diets right here, diets and diet bridge right here, and make sure they are okay. And also some resistors around them. And if they are problematic, this is pretty easy to replace. And one of my biggest advice here, do not skimp on fuses. Otherwise, you're going to spend hours poking around and fixing your multimeter if you blow it up. So thank you guys for watching again. See you next time. Stay tuned for new videos.